The following video will address some symptoms and diagnostics which involve the feed-forward switch on the HEM saw H105A and Cyclone A horizontal series saws. It is very important to follow all safety practices and pay attention to all safety precautions and warnings noted in this video. This is an advanced procedure that should only be performed by qualified personnel. Crushing injuries or electrical shock injuries could occur, causing severe injury or even death. If in automatic mode and with a part quantity entered, the feed shuttle moves forward and stops and the process does not continue on your HEMSAW model H105A, H105LA, or Cyclone A, it is possible that the feed forward limit switch is either not being activated or the switch could need replacement. If, after performing the following checks outlined in this video, the saw still does not operate properly, it could be a bad input-output board is causing the issue. For further help in correcting the problem, contact HEM Tech Support by email to servicewebmails at hemsaw.com or by calling 918-824-6111. This video will cover diagnosing, accessing, and adjusting the feed forward limit switch as found on the HEMSAW H105A series and the HEMSAW Cyclone A series bandsaws. This component is only found on the automatic bar feed models such as the Dash 4 or Dash C versions. For this adjustment procedure, you are going to need just a few basic tools a ratchet wrench, a 7 16 inch socket, a short extension, and a standard screwdriver. You might also need an open end 7 16 inch wrench if an additional adjustment is required on the adjustable bolt that contacts the actuator bar. This adjustment will be shown later in the video. The feed forward switch transmits information back to the control that the bar feed or shuttle has reached the most forward position. This communicates that the shuttle feed is completely forward and the material is in position and ready to be cut. While the saw is in the lockout tagout state, the hinged cover on the back of the control panel can be opened to view the diagnostic switches. In normal operation, all of the switches should be in the down or normal position. If you see a switch in a mode other than the normal position, such as those marked open or closed, reset the switch to the normal position and try running the saw in auto mode again. The feed forward diagnostic switch is the second one from the left when the hinged cover is open. If the door is opened and the saw is taken out of the lockout tagout state, you can observe the lights illuminating as an automatic sequence proceeds. The light associated with the feed forward diagnostic switch should be illuminated when the switch is closed, as when the feed is retracting, or the switch is not being allowed to go into the open state. Return the saw to the lockout tagout state before proceeding with any work. Before attempting to access the feed forward switch, check to be sure the feed is to the rear of the feed table. Remove lockout tagout devices and re-energize the saw to perform any mechanical operations you need to observe, placing it back to the safety lockout tagout state before proceeding with any maintenance. By retracting the feed a few inches during these diagnostics, you will know that the feed forward switch should be in the closed state being held closed by the spring-loaded actuator bar. If the feed or shuttle is not in the retracted position, press the shuttle retract button on the control console to retract the feed. The feed will only retract as far back as the part length is set. 
It is recommended that the part length is set for approximately a 3 or 4 inch part during this procedure so that later you will easily see the adjustable bolt is separated from the actuator bar. Reverse the shuttle to the retracted position. Once the feed has stopped in the retract position, use normal lockout tagout procedures to secure the saw before attempting to perform any work on it. To access the feed forward switch, the front inspection plate on the feed table must be removed using a 7 16 inch socket head to remove the four quarter inch bolts. Once the bolts are removed, lift the plate off. You may have to tap the plate slightly to release it. You can use a rubber hammer or just your hand and gently tap it to release it from the feed frame and store it out of the way. The feed forward limit switch is a normally open switch that is held closed by a spring-loaded actuator bar until the feed is all the way forward and the actuator bar is contacted by an adjustable bolt. The feed forward switch assembly is located along the inside of the feed table side rail. You will need to remove the small cover plate that covers the bottom of the actuator bar and the switch using a 7 16 inch socket to remove the small bolt that holds the cover on. Pry the small plate up using the slot head screwdriver and set it aside. The feed forward switch is deactivated when the feed moves all the way forward, opening the circuit when the adjustable bolt contacts the actuator bar and the actuator bar disengages from the switch and allows it to open. With the feed moved to the rear, Check to see that the spring-loaded actuator bar is making contact with the switch plunger and is depressing it, creating the closed circuit. If the spring-loaded actuator bar is not depressing the switch when the feed is retracted to the rear of the saw, as shown here, loosen the retainer strap that holds the switch in place by loosening the two screws that hold the strap against the switch. Move the switch slightly closer to the actuator bar and tighten it back down so that the strap holds the switch firmly in place. Check that the actuator bar will depress and release the switch when moving the lever by hand, simulating the action of the adjustable bolt making contact or retracting when the feed moves forward or backward. Now move the bar feed forward by pressing the button on the control panel. Check that the adjustable bolt is making enough contact with the actuator bar so that it is moved off of the plunger on the switch. When the feed is forward and the actuator bar lever is disengaged with the switch, there should be at least a 10,000 gap between the lever and the switch plunger. If the actuator bar is not moving from the switch far enough to open the switch when the feed is forward, the adjustable bolt can be turned out slightly so that it makes more contact with the actuator bar. Loosen the jam nut on the bolt and turn the bolt out slightly, being careful not to make an adjustment so large that it could damage the actuator bar. And as previously mentioned, there should be at least a 10 thousandths gap between the actuator bar and the switch plunger when the feed is completely forward and the adjustable bolt is engaging the actuator bar lever. The 10 thousandths dimension is not critical and the important point is to have the actuator totally clear the switch plunger to open the switch and still make enough contact to close the switch when deactivated. When all of the required adjustments are complete, replace the small plate that covers the switch and actuator bar and tighten the bolt using the ratchet and 7 16 inch socket. Replace the large inspection plate back onto the top of the feed table and bolt it securely back down to the feed table frame rails.
This completes the adjustment procedure for the feed forward limit switch on the Hemsaw H105A and Cyclone A bandsaws. If you have any questions or require further assistance, please call Hemsaw Tech Support at 918-824-6111 or visit us at www.hemsaw.com.